it's Teresa here again from London it's a lovely warm May afternoon in late late May but having said that I've had to put the heating on because I'm cold but the sun is just coming through the windows now now this is a continuation of my first video on slow stitching today I'm going to show you how to start the covers now I have two covers here to show you the first one um, the one in front I'm just going to set my clock because I don't want to overrun oh it's not working oh, never mind anyway the first one I'm going to show you um, as I said the one in front and it's probably all the things that you saw in the journal uh, video yesterday or whenever you watched it we have antique lace here and that is um, slow stitch down over about three little patches I can see red blue and pink and white there here there is a piece of applique applied or attached slow stitched on top of netting I've used netting on this I love using vegetable netting just like this there is so much that you can do with it and it's really interesting and quite fun to use so I'll be using some of that later a um, little bit of bling just to outline certain areas some straight stitch here uh, it's all slow stitch it's all running stitch the only machine stitch you can see is the machine stitch that you could see yesterday and that is around the applied flowers the manufactured flowers let me just make this bigger for you that's it it all looks very purple and blue that's because it is actually <laughs> purple and blue but it looks as if something's wrong with it but no it actually looks like that so um, we have more bits all, all um, applied small bits we have flower here from that vintage tablecloth that I used on the first video uh, more running stitch a lovely little bit of net netting here with this the polka dots on it can you see the polka dots there i think that is really lovely pink on pink little bits of red poking through from behind and more bling here and buttons i think i explained yesterday i say yesterday because that's when the first video was made um i love using buttons they add a lot of texture you can make them into flower heads and all sorts of things we have some white lace here tiny bit of white lace um, and once again the border the border is done exactly the same way or the edging as the pages in the first journal were done and as I explained yesterday in the first video the edges haven't been mitered so if you missed the first video and you've just joined in and this one and you think she hasn't mitered the the edges there was a story to that which i won't go into today but i can mitre but i actually prefer this sort of shabby looking effect now that is the first one i don't think there's anything more on here to explain except for it is another wrap round uh cover it hasn't got a hard spine so this is like the cover on the first one it wraps round although that's because i use too many pages the ones that we're about to make will won't have as many pages as the original one i'm going to take some out and be a little bit selective in what we do so anyway that is the first cover I'm deliberately not showing you the insides until later so that's the first one the second one is slightly bigger um, and this is actually my favorite this one I'm going to make that bigger it's basically the same um, fabrics that you've seen before on the two covers you've seen now the one on the original folder and the uh, sorry i don't know why i keep calling it a folder cover and the cover that i've just shown you 
this one um, I just love it has the batik along here along the edge and I'm not sure if that is why I like it the green isn't coming out too well on the video I hope it comes out um, when it's finished when, on, in the processing but I've joined these two because I didn't have quite enough binker through here it's on the background of binker now yesterday I said the binker was four holes to the inch and I lied terribly it isn't four it's actually six to the inch so I correct that from yesterday folks here this is appliqued onto a background of slow stitch running stitch applique once again uh, vintage that's the vintage tablecloth this is furnishing fabric and I just love that that's from a net curtain um, oh I think that's lovely this is a piece of gold here gold fabric and I think it just sets it off there are a couple of paper flowers here there's one there and there's a part of one there once again that's batik here it's all slow stitched the same apply here it's got the same fabrics there this believe it or not I, it's from some net curtaining and I mean they're completely three-dimensional can you see that absolutely gorgeous so I took a strip of that um, a similar flower to the one that was on yesterday's cover once again you're beginning to recognize all these the vintage tablecloth which has been coffee dyed the feather stitch here to fill in a gap more um, upholstery fabric I filled in a gap here with some cross stitch cross stitch is lovely to do and what I've done with these two I've joined them in the middle I've joined them in the middle with some hessian I've removed some threads from the hessian and I've woven the gold antique gold lace uh, sorry not lace ribbon through the areas of the missing threads now these holes I don't know if you can see the holes if they're coming out yes they are you see these holes here these were from another sack children's toy sack that I am um, cut up and those holes were the pit bits that the cord went through it was a drawstring bag and the threat the cord went through those holes and you pull, pulled it up so I've left those I almost made a feature of them in fact at first I put beads in the center and it just threw out the whole look of this cover so I removed them and decided not to make a feature of them but my initial gut reaction was yeah I've got to fill those it's a space that needs filling but no I'm just beginning to learn you don't have to fill all the spaces I did actually consider <laughs> doing cross stitch or feather stitch down here but I thought no no I'm going to leave it the blank spaces complement the busyness of the running stitch the slow stitch so I hope you like that now we're going I'm going to hide the insides of that as well for the moment and put that over there now how we start this is on a piece of nice firm solid and strong backing fabric now you can use um, upholstery fabric you can use whatever you have lying around I've used cotton I've used dressmaking fabric uh, all sorts of things but this is calico I'm just going to make this smaller this has actually got an auto focus on it but do you think it it doesn't actually auto focus if that's the right saying it doesn't seem to be doing that but then I did have a bit of trouble with this camera about two years ago and I thought that people had sorted it out but anyway enough of that so this measures um, nine and three quarter inches or 25 centimeters 
by 12 by 14 inches or 3 30 40 40 50 centimeters i think please check that so that i'm going to do that in inches so that was nine and three quarters of an inch by 14 inches you might like to check the centimeters there because i i'm not sure i did that correctly so this is the basis now i have taken various pieces straight out of my rag bag I have actually ironed some of them because they were so badly creased but normally I would just take them out and use them as they come out but because I had to um, iron some because they were so creased I'm going to have to cut them I don't really like doing that but I'm going to do it anyway so let's start with we're going to start with this one now this it's from my son, one of my son's shirts that I told you about yesterday. How he felt obliged to donate some of them to me before I actually chopped them up anyway. I've coffee dyed them. So the little sample that you saw yesterday might have been pure white. That's because I coffee dyed these last night. And I had them all over the place. So now I will put... A dressmaker's pin in the middle now some people i know actually use a glue stick to put them down now the glue sticks i find will hold for a, a small amount of time will hold the fabric to the back in for just a small amount of time but by the time you get down here and then you start tacking it they're beginning to come off so it's up to you you might want to use the glue stick or i would prefer to do this it this way so um i would recommend you do it that way right we have the first one down now i'm grabbing these i'm grabbing these blinds they're over here and i'm just going to grab them blind ah this piece is a piece of ada now what will i will do with this this is just right for when it comes time to doing the running stitches the slow stitch we can actually use the ada to perhaps do a very very neat stitch we could do a counted cross we could do counted running we might decide not to do that at all but that's just one option and this i dyed um last weekend with food coloring that is actually red the food colouring was bright red. I dyed it and just rinsed the excess off and it's dried like that and I think that's perfect. I've got some more here of a different colour which I'll show you. Now I'm not paying any attention whatsoever to colours. I'm not matching the colours. I'm just grabbing them as my hand goes in the basket and takes one out. So it will be interesting to see what we actually end up with. And I'm going to try to do this quickly. So, oh, I hope the light's not going to fail too much. I mean, this is London after all, so you do expect it to rain. But the sun's gone in now. So I need to hurry this up. It's nearly five o'clock in the afternoon right we'll have a nice bit of blingy look at this this pet this is furnishing fabric and the back is as nice as the front i have actually been using the back because it's lovely oh there's a little bit of sewing there that i must have been playing around with i'm going to use the back of that i'm going to pop it there um what else right in 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 you go this right they're all cut because i'm tearing them they're all coming out with straight edges which i'm not keen on luckily this one has serrated edge i used the pinking shears on that at some time i dyed that cut with coffee to tone the bright colors down and make all the colors that i'm using a little bit muted so 
in that sense the tone should match well that's quite a large piece that's my son's shirt as well oh we will be pleased he contacted me a little while ago i think he's feeling guilty that he's not seen me now for a couple of weeks and um i can tell i know it was by text but do you find that you can actually gauge someone's feelings by their text i know people laugh at me friends laugh at me and my children especially but i can tell by how they've written their text you know what's going on it might even be just mother's instinct let me know if i'm wrong but i had this distinct feeling that um he's his other brother my other son his brother my other son they went to football yesterday at wembley um, they both support Charlton Athletic. Now, I have a feeling, because I'd already said to my eldest son, there's 10 years between them both, I'd already said to the eldest son, have I upset your brother? Because I've not seen that little monkey recently. What's going on? Now, when they go quiet, I automatically assume that <laughs> something's happening. You know? And, um, so, so, out of the blue, just... Probably an hour ago, the little one, I saw it say the little one, he's what, 25, the baby of the trio, has just sent me a really lovely text, hello mum, you know, how are you, and all this and that, are you about Friday, um, I can come over, I'll see you Friday mum, but, but um, although I'm going to see Michael Bublé, he's going with his girlfriend, so that was a oh yeah I'll come in mum but I can't stop so um hmm but I will be interested to see that little monkey to see what's going on they think that I don't notice but I do and I'm sure any mother carer parent um anybody and I have to say it anyone who's got animals <laughs> And I mean that in the nicest possible way. So, right, I don't know what's ha up with this. Something has happened with the camera. Oh, it's still going. I wish it wouldn't do that. Right, sorry about that. So, I'm going to try and get a wriggle on here. At the moment, it's probably looking gross. But believe me, by the time I finish, hopefully... Now, I keep going for that. I just... My hands are automatically drawn to lace. Look, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? That's another piece of upholstery fabric. And the back, once again, is just gorgeous. I'm going to use the front of this. Not too much because it's just a little bit in your face, I think. Right, so I'm popping that there. Yeah, so anyway, the baby son might be gracing me with his presence. I wouldn't mind. He's seven minutes up the train line. He lives right outside the station. Um, and I only live, I live in, you know, a couple of minutes from my station. Seven minutes, mind you, bless him. He's getting married shortly and I know they're very busy. He's got a gorgeous, gorgeous girlfriend very proud to call her daughter-in-law um but yeah they do make you smile don't they these kids don't we love them though anyway that's enough of that so we're gradually getting there the thing is when you um i don't know if you found it when you use coffee or tea to dye the fabric and you spend any amount of time then sewing with it does it make you feel like coffee all i can smell is coffee and i mean i would have coffee intravenously dripped into my veins if i could i'm a real coffee drinker as long as it's decaf um, caffeinated makes me edgy so these are just smelling absolutely gorgeous now I'm trying to split the flowers up a little bit. Don't want too many flowery bits in one area. And I'm also aware of the time, so no, 
that's too big at the moment that's far too big so let's have what's this oh i haven't had this yet i'm going to rip this this is my daughter's blouse I do think she gave this to me and she didn't just leave it lying around. <laughs> She'll let me know when she sees this anyway. <laughs> In no uncertain terms. Love her. <laughs> oh, my poor children. I expect um, your family's put up with just the same. They're not bad, are they really, for what they do put up with? When I was doing my A-level um, textile art, I used to stay with my art teacher quite a lot. And um, she was lovely, an older lady, and um, she didn't have any children. And she used to say to me, if I could have a daughter, I'd want one like you. I think it's because I used to make her laugh a bit. But anyway, I used to stay with her. And she used to say to me, she was an art teacher, she used to say, I would never, ever have an art teacher uh, lodger never have an art student lodger she said or i would never marry an art teacher because we are so messy and i used to i just used to smile well when i went to university um and studied as you know i studied art is history of art and textiles um the art lecturer used to say to me teresa you are the bane of my life I've never had a student so untidy as you. She said, where other students take over one table, you take three. And I just used to laugh and say, it's a sign of great creativity, isn't it? Untidiness. <laughs> she didn't agree, but still, <laughs> that was my story. Now, because I've been chatting, I've just cut my finger, but I'm carrying on. I've wrapped some thread, uh, some... Oh, some of my son's shirt around it. Isn't it always the way? So there you go. Right, a little bit more. Now this, oh, that's a good match for this. Oh, I'm pleased about that. This is yellow, Ada, as you can see. I'm just going to chop it about. Yellow, Ada. And this was coffee dyed as well over the weekend. Um, sorry, this was... Uh, also dyed with natural i have to say they're natural food colorings a yellow one and this came out beautifully it came out a lot brighter than that but as i explained i steeped all these fabrics that i'm using now in coffee just to mute them all and give them a similarity i didn't do the gold threads i have to admit i didn't do that i really didn't want to darken those at all right i'm getting there very very slowly um this is my partner's shirt you know i could actually set up some sort of clothes bank with the clothes that i get donated to me not to wear i mean goodness i would do though if anybody donated something i liked Things are too too expensive to have stupid pride like that anymore. Perhaps once before I was divorced, <laughs> I might have said, oh no, no. But it's funny, isn't it? Those of you who are divorced or you've been through a horrible, horrible breakup um, of any sort, your sort of priorities change a little bit. I found my priorities changed an awful lot. Um, at one time I wouldn't have shopped in the cheaper shops along the high street. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But as soon as I was left on my own, in I went. And I was so impressed. I was so impressed. And I just love them. I just love them. They're not what I thought they... I'm taking that one off. They're not at all what I thought they were. You know, full of rubbish and that. So, um, save me a fortune. But anyway, right, I'm going to cut... Oh, no, I've got a patch there. Oh, lovely, look. Another piece of blingy fabric. I'm going to pop that under there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it matches that flower. Oh, I'm so pleased about that. 
Not that anything else matches. Right. Now, any little pieces that are, haven't been covered up can be done along the way. I'm not too keen on these plain ones. I have a lot of lace here that will be applied on top. Actually, I might just put that there as well. Now, I'm not too worried either about the very edges because these will be covered up with a trim, with a trimming or a border. So I'm not too bothered about little bits like this that have been missed or a little bit like that. That's too big. That one's a bit too big to be missed. So I need to put something there. Oh, what have I pulled it off? Oh, that'll do. That'll do. This is just very, very random. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Right, and that will go there. Now, that's, I'm calling that covered. I'm calling that done, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is tack all the way round. Now, I've got a lovely big needle here, a nice long needle if you can see that nice long needle with a large eye it's pointed because of the different textures of fabrics and the overlay you need a nice sharp pointed needle that's going to go through all the layers now there's my clock again big stitches it's not an examination so big big stitches all the way around to hold the edge in place Right, so you need to do that all the way round. Whoops. I'll let that finish first. I meant to turn him off. I bought that clock in the Black Forest in Germany. Oh my goodness. I mean, I'm totally in love with Germany, any part of Germany, and I love it. But I have to say the Black Forest is absolutely stunning. And I bought that uh, a great big cuckoo um, clock shop. And I got it all the way home from Germany, across the channel, the English Channel, um, up into London, all on a coach. And the journey was, oh my gosh. Well, we had to make an overnight stay in France. And once again, I took the cuckoo clock from the coach where it had been on my lap, took it into the hotel, carefully placed it down. Um, next day, back on the coach, up to the uh, Calais to get the the, uh, the train underneath the channel, still on my lap, all the way back up to London. I got it in, it was just before Christmas, I got it in and I put it on the wall and oh, it looked beautiful and I draped some tinsel, Christmas tinsel around it and I thought, no, I don't like that. I pulled the tinsel off, <laughs> the clock came crashing down and it broke. <laughs> so, uh, the cuckoo now has a mind of its own. It doesn't chime on the hour. It, um, tends to chime at 10 minutes past every hour or when it feels like it. It's only just started telling the correct time after maybe two years, I think, maybe longer than that. But it's so pretty. And I think, well, that clock has history. I always think things have a history, have a story. Uh, it's like all the fabrics on here. They all have a history, a story. And um, so anyway, that's the story of the cuckoo clock. So it could actually go off again in a minute, but that doesn't mean to say it's been an hour. Right now, so that is the outer edge, all around the edge, tack down. Tacking, um, I forgot to say, I'm just assuming that you all know, tacking is like that. Very, very long, like running stitch. It's also called basting. And the idea of that, it just tacks, it holds something into place until you put the, the final stitch there and then you remove your tacking stitches. Now, 
you can also if you prefer you can tack all these into place now I must be honest with you I'm only doing this to show you it keeps it in place while you sew now if you have the skills and the confidence not to tack inside then for goodness sake don't do it just for the sake of doing it because I just think you're wasting time um, if you don't need to do it then don't do it it's as simple as that really but I'm just doing this to show you that it does hold the fabric in place and it is you know it's very good if you feel perhaps you haven't done this before and you just feel you need a little bit you need to do it for just a little bit of security if you like it won't all fall to pieces because you have pinned it but you see how it holds it down nicely now I could take that pin out because it's secure it's totally secure now without the pin could take that pin out because that's secure now um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave you here and I'm going to carry on and the next video I will show you how to sew all this together so if you can get as far as this if you're following step by step then we'll do the rest together in the next video so hopefully the end of the next video we will or sometimes after we will actually have finished the cover it's not going to take too long if you do some in your own time oh i sound, sounded very much like teaching didn't i telling my students what to do sorry about that folks <laughs> i do tend to do that <laughs> years and years of teaching students who don't want to be in class but anyway <laughs> there you go now you can get you'll get a rough idea already of what that's going to look like so what i'm going to do now i'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon and part of the evening well several hours actually sewing these down with running stitch okay going to put, sew them with running stitch all the way around the edge with running stitch and some of them if we go back to this cover some of them will have the running stitch go straight across them um, down all different ways straight across using different colored threads so there you are so that's the start now if you do decide to carry on very briefly you might want to start putting your bits of lace on top this bit comes with the next video so see how far you get with this so the next thing you're going to do is tack it all around the edge to hold it secure and then it's up to you if you tack each on individually and then you're going to start running stitches two strands of thread in a nice needle I will possibly use the same needle if it's too long for you make it a shorter needle with a point you still want the pointed needle with a fair size eye because you're going to put two strands of thread in there so good luck with that so i'll see you again in the next video we will then it will then start looking almost finished it won't be finished but almost so anyway take care have a great evening and keep safe thank you very very much for joining me bye bye oh yeah <laughs> i nearly forgot if you liked it could you lo like the video please and subscribe Thank you very, very much. Take care now. Bye-bye.